Hey, this is the Laser Picker 2 Pro. And this thing is a little bit different than all of the other lasers I've worked with in the past. And I have had quite a few experiences with lasers, as you can see. Here, 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 and here. In this video, I'm going to highlight all the features that make this laser different than all the rest. First things first, let's take a look inside the packaging and see what all is included. Here we have the protective shielding the main laser unit itself, which has a nice amount of heft to it, which was a little bit unexpected. Inside, we can see the Galvo mirror system, which I cannot wait to show you how that works. The protective shielding just clips right down into place when in use. You also get some sample pieces and some protective goggles, which appear to be the correct color and wavelength for this type of diode laser. So good on you, laser pecker. The only real assembly that you have with this unit is just these two bolts here that attach the main arm to the base plate. After that, all you have to do is plug in a few cables depending on what accessories you're using at the time of engraving. The base plate itself allows you to move the laser head up or down depending on the thickness of your material. And you can either do a long press to have a continuous up or a short press for a short movement. The laser head can also be tilted at whatever angle you might need, but as you can see, if you rotate it at 90 degrees, it's a little back heavy here, but this can be easily corrected by just putting something heavy on the base plate. You can use your smartphone or tablet to scan the QR code and install the app on your device, and then you're ready to go. I really like that you can preview the boundaries of your engraving, or you can also set it up with the center point. Now for this first engraving, I'm using their recommended engraving speed for wood, which is 100% power at 5% depth. And I'm engraving on just some 2x4 material. And for the first engraving, I'm quite impressed. It's nice and clean and consistent. And even though the depth isn't that deep, it does look really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and set the depth to 25%, and we can see this took two minutes and 11 seconds, but the depth is much deeper this time around. I'm gonna get out some digital calipers and measure it so we can see. It's 0.023 inches, or for everyone not in America, that would be 0.58 millimeters. The next one, I'm going to set it to 75% depth, which is way too slow for this type of material, but I thought we would check it out anyways. I also wanted to figure out what would happen if I was to close out the app while the engraving is running. And you can see you can open up other apps and do other things. You can even completely close out the app and it still continues to run. Now, one downfall is I did notice that once disconnected from the app, the safety features do stop working. As you can see, I'm bumping the laser and it should be turning off. The only way for me to turn it off was to reconnect to the laser and hit the stop button. Or, of course, I could have unplugged the cables. Now, the depth here at 75% is 0.0605 inches or 1.53 millimeters. Now let's take a look inside the app. As you can see, we have some different options here. The first thing we're looking at is using the gallery section where you can look at different files on your phone and you can see you can edit them in different ways. You can also use the creation tab where you can type out different text. You can even input your own fonts that you can download online, or you can even use the drawing function, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, for the next sample, we're going to take a look at how the laser does on a slate coaster. Now with these, I like to spray them with clear lacquer first, which gives me a nice high contrast between the engraving and the stone itself. 
We can also get a look up into the inside of the laser here, and you can see the mirror is what's moving back and forth, which is putting the laser at the exact location it needs to engrave. This engraving only took six minutes and two seconds, and I used their wood setting for this. I think I could actually run it a little bit faster than this and still get some good engravings on slate. Now here is a wooden coaster made out of cedar, and I'm gonna run it at the same speed and power on here, just so we can see how it would look on wood. The depth is quite nice, and again, the consistency of the engraving just looks really, really good. And I'm gonna take some isopropyl alcohol and spray the wood, just so you can get a sample of what it would look like if I was to spray some clear finish on the wood itself. Next, we're gonna test out the metal engraving capabilities of this laser. I use their default metal settings, which is 100% power at 100% depth. I wasn't super impressed by the contrast, even after running it two times in the same spot. So I decided to try out the mustard method, which I've had good success with before. But even after that, after I wiped it off, the contrast between the engraving and the stainless steel wasn't as dark as you could get with, say, a 10-watt laser that you could find on the X-Tool. Which, if you're interested in seeing that, I have a separate review video on that you can go check out. All right, now let's get the roller attachment out of the box set up so we can take a look at some of the different configurations you can use with it. The roller comes with these two auxiliary roller outfeed supports that you can use for engraving long materials that you can run across in a mode that they call slate mode. And everything is magnetic so you can just pop them back into place on the underside. And a little later I'm going to show you how you can use it as wheels like this. But first, let's go ahead and pop it into place underneath the laser. Again, it's magnetic, so it lines up perfectly. Now, since these rollers are made out of metal, they don't provide a whole lot of gripping strength, but you can combat that by applying these small silicone rings that you can put on small rounded objects. Now let's take a close look at the engraving itself. As you can see, it's very small details here and they're coming out quite nicely. I decided to do the same thing on a plastic pen here. I probably could have run it a little bit faster to get a little bit cleaner of engraving, but I'm pretty happy with the results that I got here. Be mindful of what plastics you are engraving as a lot of plastics do produce harmful chlorine gases. Next, I'm gonna do a continuous engraving all the way around this one and three quarter inch piece of maple dowel. And as you can see here, the engraving went all the way around and you cannot see the start or end point on it. And this engraving took eight minutes and 30 seconds at 5% depth, 100% power. Next, I'm gonna level out a tumbler on the rollers and we're gonna do an engraving on a painted tumbler and see how well the laser pecker does with that. After cleaning it off, you can see we've got down to the nice shiny metal underneath. All right, next we're gonna take a look at what they call slate mode, which is where you can use the rollers to send material over the top of the rollers at whatever length you can fit up there. And it's pretty neat to be able to do this because this kind of takes it beyond what you can even do with most gantry lasers. I took a few standard magnets and put them on top of the roller and you can see they're helping hold the piece of wood parallel to the rollers itself. And it came out looking really nice. Now it's time to set it up for what is definitely my favorite feature, which is what they call trolley mode. And this is essentially like taking a Roomba and strapping a laser to it. 
It's pretty much the coolest thing I've ever seen before. And the capabilities with this technology are really quite incredible. And here we can see how clean that engraving came out and how straight the robot was able to ride down this long distance. Now let's take a look at what that handle is all about. So basically you can use this laser as a portable marking device and I'm gonna attempt to mark my miter saw station over here holding the laser in place with just my hands. Now I did pick to do quite a large engraving here at a slow speed. I believe it took about six minutes and once I show you the results, you'll see that I was not able to keep it completely still. But even with that, it still makes for a pretty cool engraving. And with a little practice, I may be able to get better and better at this technique. Now, after realizing how difficult it is to hold the laser steady for such a long period, I realized I could use the laser base to achieve what I had just done earlier. So I got it set up, I lined it up with the up and down adjustments, and then just push the laser up against the material that I want to engrave. So this removes the human element and makes for a perfect engraving without worrying about the laser moving at all. So here we can see a comparison between the one done with the base holding it in place and the one done where I'm holding it still with my hands. Another cool feature is you can create barcodes. So you can see here I'm typing in some digits, 0012, and then I'm going to engrave that barcode here on this crate down here. Now, I haven't opened up this crate quite yet, but if you're interested in seeing what device might be inside this crate, I suggest you follow along and catch me on a future video. So that engraving only took about a minute and I had it on the wood setting, but I'm gonna turn down the depth and run it one more time and see if we can get it down to just 30 seconds. And I'm gonna pull out my phone scanner here and it actually only worked on the quicker engraving here. So you can see 0012, the barcode worked correctly. Now back to my favorite mode of all, which is trolley mode. Now, something else that you can get for this laser is a battery pack. So you can completely unplug it from the wall. And I think that would be really cool just to be able to set the laser up on something so long and not have to worry about cables. Now, I did create these dashes and marks to be what would be a five foot long ruler. But after measuring it out with my tape measure, it seems to be about two inches off from being completely accurate. I'm not sure if that is because of the traction or if there is something going on in the software or what. Now, another cool feature is right directly from the app, you can create QR codes just by dropping in your text or links. Here, I created a QR code to direct people to my website. And I'm going to first, I just wanna check out the length and width. It's supposed to be 100 millimeters and it does come up a bit short at 92 millimeters. And I think that could have something to do with the focal distance here, but I, assumed that using the plastic shield would have gotten me an accurate reading. So that's just something to watch out for. You may not be getting the most accurate engravings when it comes down to measurement. But regardless of that, the QR code works perfectly and it scanned right away with my phone. I'm really excited to be able to add this to my collection of tools in the workshop. As I can see, a lot of outside the box uses for a machine like this. If you got something from this video, I'm gonna recommend checking out my other videos as well, as I've done a lot of different reviews on other lasers. Or if you just wanna see some of my project videos where I get to build some really fun things, you can check those out as well. I also wanna thank my supporters on Patreon for supporting what I'm able to do here. 
Kyle Hickson and Woodland Iron. I want to thank you for watching and I hope you find me on the next one.